Hi and welcome my YouTube subscribers. This is the Hobo Prepper and I am Friar Tuck. Having to get in the shade, my uh, my redheaded butt uh, gets uh, charbroiled real easy. I mean, it was cool this morning. It was actually really nice. But um, what we're gonna be talking about today is we're gonna talk about prepping, okay? Uh, I know a lot of you, the reason why you joined this channel was because of prepping. But, you know, so many preppers, okay, and, and the mistakes of preppers are that, you know, they want to, okay, let's just call it what it is. If you want to save money, by all technicality, you're a hoarder. Now, it's socially acceptable to hoard money, but it's still, you're a hoarder. Same thing when it comes to preparing and being prepped for what's coming. You are, you are hoarding food, you are hoarding ammunition, you're hoarding resources, you're hoarding supplies, okay? Now, let's just say, hypothetically, okay, with things that are going on, Let's just say that the supply chain breaks down. Let's say uh, OPEC really drives up the price of oil and the ability to get goods and services uh, globally uh, become uh, harder to do. Let's say that po the, the possibility that a global conflict uh, goes uh, comes about, especially with what's going on with NATO and Ukraine and Russia and China and Taiwan and all those different things, okay? You know, now that's gonna disrupt the supply chain. You may, because of, you know, what side of the fence each one of these different countries are that manufacture our goods and that produce our goods and that, that, um, that, that handle the goods and ser the goods that we send to them to be processed, okay? Now that, that may cause a severe disruption in the supply chain, okay? And what happens when all of a sudden, because of public policy, in order to keep the masses from having a, a large amount of civil unrest because it's in the government's best interest to keep us docile, to keep us from actually uh, going into a point where we are, uh, we are angry, we're agitated, we're, we're demonstrating in the streets and we have the, uh, the, the, what, the summer protests like we had a couple of years ago with the George Floyd protests, okay? So with that being said, you know, looking at that, you know, what, what tools, what things do you have um, that are going to protect you? Now you may say, oh yes, I live on a homestead and I have, I, I have food. Well, guess what? People will see that you're hoarding food and due to public policy in order to keep the masses quiet and, and, and doing, uh, you know, not, not uh, doing civil unrest. They may say, oh, well, anybody who's hoarding food and now you're all of a sudden a hoarder, you now have to give up your food. And now you are fighting off government agents. You are fighting off all kinds of, of different agencies. Be, uh, and not only that, you're fighting off the public and the people because they want what you have. Now, whether it's being prepared or whether it is making the wrong preparations, that's, that's up for debate. You know, we can debate this all, all day long. But at the end of the day, what happens happens and you're going to have to be prepared for it. OK, so, you know, w with that being said, you know, there are other ways to, pr to prepare yourself other than just having a homestead. Yes, it is a good idea to be able to have a plot of the land and to be able to know how to grow and how to do things like that, because that's going to become important. But what happens when, you know, our seed bank becomes decimated? What happens when our crop yields are less? What happens when we have global conflict? How is that going to affect how society views you and how secure are you in your stuff? You're only a, a small family uh, trying to fend off hordes, okay? And you guys have heard me talk about this before, okay? If you've been following for a while. Okay, so with that being said, you know, what is it that I'm offering here to you to help you guys be prepared? There is more than one way to skin a cat and there's more than one way to be prepared. Now, you know, you're gonna have to rely on your connections, on your networking, on your skill set, okay? And sometimes these skill sets are, are gonna be more valuable than not, okay? So as I was talking about um, in one of my Patreon videos just a minute ago, is that you know uh, as as um, the job market uh, as we go through this great reset, as the uh, as the the workforce uh, uh, changes from you know needing to be able to do just general menial labor that doesn't require much education or much skill to be able to support society to where everything uh, is using robotics and artificial intelligence to be able to do these menial tasks so that they no longer need the large workforce that they need. Well, you know what, if you're in debt and you haven't paid your stuff off, what does this mean for you? This means that you're gonna be homeless, okay? This means that you run the risk of being dispossessed of, of all of the things in which you have that there is debt and collateral, okay? Now, uh, with, with that being said, 
uh, Donald Trump and one of the things that he was trying to do now he he may have thought that he was doing you know doing a good a good thing because you know everybody has their own idea of the homeless but what happens when because of how the workforce changes over the next few years what happens if you become dispossessed and you're homeless are you a drug addict are you lazy no you've been working hard your whole life you just did not uh, improve your skill set to meet the new needs of the new economy okay and because you didn't meet those needs of the new economy you have now been dispossessed and now you're being sent to these very camps that you're going yes we need to send people to these camps we're tired of the homeless they're nothing but lazy junkies well you know uh, you're going to be lumped in with that whether you are or you aren't okay that's just the way that the world goes okay so what skill sets are you doing um and one of the things one of the, the directions that i'm going in this channel because of my mentor um because he he has the background and the skill set and uh, you know it just there's a, there's a lot of stuff that that i'm learning and some of it i can share with you some of it i cannot you know but you know it helps me create the content that i can be able to share with you and then also to be able to do the tutorials okay and you know becoming uh, digital uh, to have digital literacy is important if you do not have some form of digital literacy to where you can operate a computer that you can maintain a, 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 a computer or a network system uh, going off and getting that skill set and getting that education if you are if you're not preparing yourself for the new economy all the other preparations that you've done may be moot because you know at the end of the day you're still living on debt you're still living the great American dream of mounting up this insurmountable debt and not paying off everything that you have because these are the two choices you have either pay it all off and stay stay in the system that you're in or you know realize that you're going to have to change as an individual so what i what i want to be able to do what i want to be able to share with you guys as individuals to help you become more prepared okay is to show you another side of preparation to ensure that you're not caught out here as the economy morphs to make sure that you're not caught up into things like you know these these giant homeless camps where they start sending anybody who doesn't have a place because you were dispossessed for one reason or another um, or whether it be you know you need to be able to afford the food because the food has just gone up and you can't afford the food because you you weren't able to get into a position because a very small percentage of of preppers actually have their own homestead most of them are living in a city trying to prepare as best as possible for what whatever it is that they can whether it be buying dry goods and having a stock supply of food whether it be you know putting aside and buying gold and silver and all these different things but you know you're still going to need a job you're still going to need a way to be able to support yourself you're still going to be able to need to afford the goods and services that are out there because we live in a pay-to-play system there's no such thing as a free lunch in this country as much as we like to think that there is there is not in in life there is no such thing as a free lunch you know uh, the things that i'm doing I'm, I'm educating myself and that in itself is work you know it just because i'm not earning um, a paycheck per se does not mean that I'm not working. What it means is that I am now taking the time to educate myself to get a specific skill set. Okay, and see, so this is what I'm really. This is the message that we're going to be talking about as time goes along. Um, not only because of the influence that my mentor has had on me, but you know some of the things that he's sharing with me. Kind of, you know, not only do they fit the narrative of what I've been trying to share with you guys, but it also gives an alternative point of view. Because we, we can sit there and, and look at all the different things that are going on when it comes to, oh, yes, Ukraine's doing this. Oh, yes, Russia's doing this. Oh, we're doing this to China. Oh, this is going on. You know, this politician's corrupt. This politician's doing this. This politician's doing that. But in the grand scheme of things, there's not enough of us to make a change. Okay. Now, if we were to band together and stop being divided, that would be a whole different story. But that, that necessarily won't happen until we all have a common goal. And it may be when we're all starving, but that common goal may be robbing those who have so that those who, that don't have can actually survive. Because uh, in a lot of ways, with the new economy, we are overpopulated. We have more workers than there are jobs. Uh, and it's just a matter of time before that starts reflecting itself in the, in the overall uh, scheme of things. Okay. So I, I just wanted to talk to you guys about prepping 
and the alternative methods to prepping and how to be you know more than just somebody who has a homestead puts away money uh, for gold and silver and stuff like that but to be somebody who is taking the time to continuously educate yourself to make sure that you're able to meet the obstacles that come uh, in the future and those obstacles right now what we're seeing is the the fourth industrial revolution the great reset all of these different things you know and you know just so that just like i was talking over on on my patreon channel you do have the ability you know with linux because it is it is not a resource intensive uh, uh it's not resource intensive like like mac or like like windows is and with mac you know they're their hardware it costs a lot so if you're looking for a less expensive alternative you know you and to be able to make yourself more relevant because you know linux is is about 80 to 90 percent of the overall marketplace you know everything from your gps to uh that's in your car to the coffee pot that you have runs on a linux kernel um, Linux is one of the most popular uh, kernels or, or, or platforms that is used in a lot of things. One, because it's free, it's open source, that which means you can configure it to the way that you want it. It's already got the base platform. It's like getting a property with a, with a, a foundation and a frame, and then you can make the house however you want. That's the great thing about Linux. It doesn't cost you anything. The software doesn't cost you anything. But in order to be able to have that freedom, and you can even use legacy hardware. So if you have an older laptop or an older computer, you can now switch it over there and it'll regain the performance it once had when the day you bought it. I mean, that's what I'm loving about, about um, using Linux on my laptop is that it actually makes my machine feel the way that I, I thought it would be when I bought it. But because of how girthy Microsoft is, because you know they gotta make it so that even the, the least smartest of us all can figure out how to use it. Okay, and so therefore they lock down a lot of things and they put a lot of resources in and they preload everything. Okay, so uh, you know with Linux, you can, it's a least less expensive alternative, and the, in order to be able to get all that stuff for free, yes, great, fantastic, wonderful, but that 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 does come with a price, and that price is education. You now need to understand how to configure your, your, your environment. You now need to understand you know, what it is that you want, what it is that you can use. But I can get a free office writer. I get free video editing software. I get everything that I have, I haven't paid for other than the hardware that I have. You know, and the time that I've spent to learn the, the kernel and the operating system. And that is a small price to pay because the smarter you become, knowledge is power, knowledge is wealth wisdom is wealth okay and this will give you all of that because at the end of the day money can go away but your wisdom will be what allows you to survive okay so with that being said guys you guys know how to help the channel like subscribe share become a, a member of patreon leave me a tip down in the tip jar if you find this valuable if you want to support the cause and, and kind of help me along because you know i'm not able to go and get a regular job because of you know just the, the amount of education and the amount of uh, the, the amount of, of time and effort and energy I'm having to put in this. So, you know, as I'm waiting to get monetized or, or to get my first check from uh, YouTube, which really isn't much until I get a large subscriber base and I start getting lots of sponsors and all that other stuff, the money doesn't come for a while on YouTube, okay? It's not like all of a sudden you become a, a um, you, you become a, a, a partner and now all of a sudden you're making a livable income. I mean, I'm sitting at about $70, $80 and I've been working on it for about two months, you know, which is still pretty good. But, you know, I, I mean, if I'm getting paid $100 every three months, how does this person survive off of that? Okay. So you guys can leave a tip in the tip jar if you would like to, uh, if you'd like to contribute to the cause and kind of help give me the, the ease uh, uh, of, you know, getting all this stuff done. Okay. Um, or you can uh, go through my affiliate links, which we're going to be we're going to be changing that um, in the next about 30 to 45 days. Uh, my sponsor is going to we're going to start doing content for my sponsor. So you'll start seeing stuff from Liquid Server Systems uh, and uh, we'll be going from there. But thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share. You know, you know what to do. Thank you for being uh, uh, for being here. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you in the next one.